Welcome to our weekly international prop chat, which takes place on the first and the last week of every month at 9.30 p.m. Malaysia time or GMT plus 8 on live book, live book, I mean Facebook live at IQI International Sales page. On behalf of IQI, Global Asia largest real estate and investments advisory firm and a member of GY IQI. I'm Angela Chen, an international property consultant and your host for today. Thank you for tuning in and support our program. Our IPC programs will discuss various global real estate opportunities, investments, hotspots, and in respective countries. Of course, uh, we also talk about the investments criteria and uh, hottest properties. Today's topic is why borrow from UK lender? I am pleased to have invited um, guest speaker Sam Lee from Capricorn Finance Consultancy to join us. Hi, Sam. How are you? 
Uh, hi, Angela. I'm good, thank you. Thanks very much for having me today. Thank you so much for being here. Sam, would you like to, uh, would you please introduce yourself? Absolutely, yes. So my name's Sam. I work for a company called Capricorn Financial Consultancy. Uh, so we're actually the largest independent mortgage brokerage in London, uh, but I'm based in our Singapore office and I specialize in helping non-UK residents to get financing on UK properties. Great. Without further ado, I would like to hand over the screens to Sam for his presentation. If the audience has any questions, please feel free to drop them into the comment box after the presentation, and we will do our best to answer them promptly. Sam, the screen is now yours. Perfect. Thanks very much. So yeah, I am the Asia Pacific Director for Capricorn Financial. So I look after the operations uh, in the Asia Pacific region uh, and I've been at Capricorn Financial for about 12 years now and based out in Singapore for the last four years. Um, so I've got a topic today named why borrow from a UK lender. Um, so this talk is going to be about uh, obtaining mortgages from UK banks, of course, uh, for UK properties. So I'm going to talk to you a bit about uh, different types of terms available, pricing, uh, process, and then we'll look to answer some questions at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about my company, Capricorn Financial. So uh, as mentioned, we're the largest independent mortgage brokerage in London. Uh, we've got offices in Singapore, in Hong Kong, Dubai, um, head office in London, of course, and we're about to open up uh, an office in Shanghai. Uh, we've been going since 2005. Uh, we have over 65 advisors within the company. Uh, multiple languages spoken. So if you need to speak to a client, uh, speak to an advisor, I should say, sorry, in, in Mandarin, Cantonese, Arabic, Malay, we do have those abilities. Um, in terms of statistics, last year we helped to arrange over £2 billion pounds of lending. Uh, that was over 6,000 property transactions we assisted on. We are a whole of market mortgage brokerage. So that means that we have access to all the different lenders in the UK. Plus, we do work with some banks out here in Asia as well. And we're regulated by the FCA in the UK. Uh, we don't charge any upfront fees at all for our service. Uh, um, so it doesn't cost you anything to have a free initial consultation. Uh, and because of the size of our company, we have managed to negotiate some strategic partnerships with many of the UK lenders, giving us access to some exclusive products and some enhanced service level agreements. So that's a bit about Capricorn. Uh, within the company, we do have some specialist teams. So there is the international team, which is headed up by myself, uh, that purely focus on dealing with non-UK residents. So this really is a specialism of ours. We also have a commercial team to deal with people looking to purchase either commercial property or specialist buy to let investment properties. So it could be um, an HMO property. It, it could be um, a block of flats or, or any other uh, weird and wonderful property types. And we have a team called CPC, which stands for Capricorn Private Clients. So they deal with high net worth individuals and large loans. So typically above three million pounds. This is our product wheel. So these are some of the lenders that we work with, uh, most of them being UK lenders. Uh, if you look, first of all, at the top left hand side of the screen, uh, those are your high street street banks. Uh, those typically would lend just to UK residents. So if you were to walk into you know, any bank on the high street in the UK, normally they would tell you that they can't assist because they would just be looking to service the domestic market. Uh, however, some of them can assist non-UK residents. And then we have those at the bottom left hand side of your screen, the international lenders who are you know, well equipped to dealing with non-UK residents. So banks you'll be well aware of, such as HSBC, Bank of China, Barclay. Uh, we also work with, you know, with Maybank and UOB and other banks based out here in the Asia Pacific. Also, some of the private banks on the top right hand side of your screen are able to lend to uh, regular investment purchases uh, such as you know, Standard Chartered and Arbuthnot and a couple of others. And then we do have a number of commercial lenders who, as I say, do lend against commercial property, but also specialist buy to let. Maybe you're buying through a company structure. Um, then that's something that they will assist with. Uh, we can arrange bridging finance if short-term loans are needed, uh, or even Islamic finance if uh, you need a mortgage which is Sharia compliant. 
Uh, to give you a bit of a market summary, so right now the Bank of England base rate is 4.25%. So the Bank of England is the central bank in the UK and uh, they set the rates at which um, other lenders can borrow at. Um, so this chart actually shows you the Bank of England base rate over the last 40 years. Um, so as you can see, uh, I'd say the previous 10 to 15 years, we experienced very low interest rates. So on the right hand side of the table. Um, but however, over the last year, rates have risen time and time again. I think they've increased nine times in the last 12 months. Um, so rates are you know, clearly higher than they were this time just a year or two ago. However, we do believe that we are now either have reached the peak of the base rate or, or we are nearing the peak. So the last increase was at a smaller rate than we've previously seen. And the forecast would suggest that rates are going to look to you know, tail off from here. Um, probably will be leveling out for the remainder of the year. And some people even suggest that rates may start to decrease towards the end of this year. But just because the base rate's been going up in the last few months, um, that doesn't mean that fixed rates have been going up as well. In fact, we have seen fixed rates go down uh, since what would have been their peak in around September or October last year. Uh, reason for that is that yeah, fixed rates aren't just based on the base rates. They're also looking at swap rates um, and sort of forecasts for where rates are going to be in the future. So right now, the cheapest rates available tend to be the five year fixed rates, um, which suggests that rates are likely to be going down um, within the next five years. Um, you don't need to go for a fixed rate. You could go for what they call a tr tracker rate, uh, where you have a fixed margin um, above an index, normally the Bank of England base rate. Uh, and we have seen, you know, to make things more competitive, some lenders have reduced their spread on these tracker rates, also known as floating rates. Uh, so if you do believe that rates are going down, then going for a tracker or floating rate uh, could be a good solution for you. We have noticed over the last year or two that there are some enhanced anti-money laundering requirements for UK purchases. This is not just from the lender side of things, but it's also from the solicitors. So just be prepared that you would need to provide evidence as to the source of your deposit funds for the purchase. And the lender may have some questions around that as well. But so long as you're prepared with all the necessary documentation, then it's, it shouldn't cause any major delay. It's just something to be wary of. Um, current appetite for lending is still strong. So you know, banks still do have their targets that they need to hit for the end of the year. Uh, when speaking to lenders, they all are very keen to lend. Of course, rates are higher, but they still want to lend that money. Um, so there's been no adverse changes there. Uh, but we, ha we have actually seen some newer lenders enter the market uh, over the last year or two, which is creating a bit more innovation in the space uh, and some more competition, uh, which is always a good thing to see. So what typical lending policy can you expect from UK lenders? Uh, well, because there are so many lenders uh, that are lending to, to non-UK residents, uh, it's important to say that each lender does have their own set of criteria and policies, so it's rare that any one lender will be the same. So generally, we can find a lender that will fit with most investors, whether they have um, substantial income or no income, um, depending on the property type, the loan to value. Uh, there's a few different factors that come into play. Just to run through a few of those. So uh, in terms of income requirements, as mentioned, it does vary from lender to lender. Some banks will have a minimum income, uh, which might be around £50,000 or the equivalent of in, uh, in ringgit or whichever currency you're paid in. Some lenders might have a lower threshold, so maybe £25,000. And there are banks that have no income requirements at all. And they're purely relying on the rental income of the property, assuming it's um, an investment property. Um, the interest rates do tend to depend on the loan to value ratio. Uh, so loan to value is, is the ratio of the loan against the value of the property. The maximum loan to value is around 75% of the purchase price. However, if you were to borrow a lower loan to value, let's say 50 or 60%, you would normally expect to get a lower interest rate and access to more lenders. Uh, we can also arrange guarantor mortgages. So this is whereby uh, you're buying the property in the name of your child or your spouse but where they're unable to get a mortgage 
because perhaps they don't have income, then somebody else can come on as a guarantor for the loan to help get the mortgage that is needed. So that's something that some lenders are offering, not all. Uh, banks will normally have rental income stress tests. So, uh, for example, you know, the bank will have a minimum rental income required in order to satisfy a certain level of borrowing. And that's based on the interest rate that someone is paying. Um, so to give you an example, if somebody's paying at a rate of 5% and so their monthly payments are you know, £1,500 a month, then they would want the, the rental income to be at least 125% of that to give them sufficient cover. So each lender has different stress tests uh, and we'll find, of course, a lender um, that satisfies the requirements and that fits within the stress tests needed. We can get lending on properties anywhere in the UK. So I know that some banks here in Singapore and in Malaysia may only lend in London, whereas the banks that we're working with, it can be anywhere in the UK, uh, not just London. And we can get lending to first time buyers as well. But if you do have an existing UK property, this gives you access to even more lenders because some banks do require you to have at least one UK property, uh, but there are banks that don't have that requirement. Uh, in terms of typical terms and rates and fees, um, so of course the, the interest rate is something that everyone wants to know. What is that? Well, uh, the buy to let interest rates at the moment, uh, we're generally seeing a range of between five to seven percent. Uh, it is possible to get slightly lower than 5% at the moment, but the range generally falls around there. I think the average interest rate that I've arranged over the last couple of months is around 5.5%. And that will be on the buy-to-let basis. For a residential mortgage, so if you're buying for your own personal stay, it is possible to get slightly cheaper than that. The range will probably be between 4 to 6%. But for a residential mortgage, uh, the idea is that you know, it needs to be occupied by yourself or your family members. You cannot let out the property at all. And because there's no rental income, it's purely based on your personal income. So it's harder to qualify for that, but it still is doable. The banks will charge arrangement fees. So this is a fee charged by the lender for setting up the mortgage. A typical arrangement fee would be around two to three thousand pounds flat fee, or sometimes it's a percentage of the loan amounts, either between one to two percent. The maximum tenure of the loan would be dependent on your age so normally um, if it's an investment purchase we can get lending up to age 85. Uh, if it's for your own personal stay then it would be capped at your retirement age because that's when your income would stop uh, and of course the loan needs to be affordable for the entire term. Um, one thing we can arrange is interest only mortgages whereby you purely just need to service the interest on the loan amount. So this is quite helpful if you are stuck with having to go for a shorter term and you're concerned about higher monthly repayments, then an interest only mortgage could be the one for you as it's gonna help with cash flow. Uh, and in fact, I've got a slide which further, further demonstrates this. Um, so there's two main ways of going about paying your mortgage. You have interest only, which is, I've just mentioned, or the more traditional repayment or principal plus interest uh, as it's sometimes known as. So with an interest only mortgage the loan amount will not change throughout the term um, so ultimately you'll need to find a way to pay off the loan either at the end of the term or before but what many people do is they would just sell the property or refinance uh, to change the terms. Benefit of an interest only mortgage is that you're going to be paying less each month because there's no uh, repayment of the capital at all so you, no doubt you're going to have improved cash flow it can also be better for tax planning as well. By keeping a mortgage on that property, you're going to be uh, keeping the equity within the property at a minimum, uh, which will reduce your inheritance tax liability. You can also deduct from your rental income tax bill based on the mortgage interest that you're paying. So there are deductions to be had. Uh, so there's benefits of keeping a mortgage in play. A repayment mortgage though, that's also available. Rates tend to be the same, whether it's interest only or repayment. Um, a repayment mortgage might be more suitable if um, your goal is to have a property which is free of any debt uh, at the end of the term. Perhaps you need that as additional income into retirement or you want to live in the property at some point, And so it's good to have a mortgage debt free. Um, however, on, on the downside, of course, the payments are going to be higher. So you may be in a position where you're having to top up each month. 
we can get lending to corporate structures. So we have seen more of a trend of this over the last few years where people are looking to buy investment properties through a company structure. Uh, this is something we can get lending for. Uh, not all banks will lend to companies, but we do have many who will do. Uh, normally it would need to be a UK limited company. Um, so if you're buying through a Malaysian company or, or BVI company or other structure, um, it's more challenging, but it still can be done uh, in some instances. Uh, I guess worth pointing out that the legal process may be a bit more lengthy and therefore more expensive when you're buying through a company because there's extra paperwork you need to do and uh, you might need independent legal advice as well. But if it is your goal to buy through a company and there are some tax benefits of doing so, particularly for portfolio investors, then that's something we can assist with. So some people prefer just to you know, put all their cash down on the property rather than taking out a mortgage. Um, and it's great if you have the ability to do so. However, there might be some benefits to consider of taking out a mortgage, even if you do have that uh, ability. Uh, so, you know, for example, rather than buying the property outright with cash, you could leverage. So take out a mortgage for you know, 50 or 60 percent and buy a second property as well. So then you can have two properties and benefit from two sets of capital appreciation and two sets of rental income. Um, and by doing so, you could look to spread the risk by having one property in one location and the second in a, a different one. Or you know you could spread um, the risk further by investing in a different asset class. So um, you invest in the property and then use the remaining cash that you would have put down to invest in equities or um, some other asset. Uh, as mentioned earlier, briefly, a mortgage can help to reduce your inheritance tax liability. Uh, I won't go too much into detail on tax because I'm not a tax advisor, um, but it is also worth pointing out that you do get a 20% tax credit um, on the mortgage interest that you pay to help offset against your income tax bill. And by taking out a mortgage, it's going to reduce your exposure to any fluctuating foreign exchange rates because you're not having to transfer all the money from a foreign currency into sterling. You can borrow from the lender for that, which is always quite useful. So there may be some people viewing who have existing UK properties. And so you might want to know when is a good time to remortgage. Uh, well, a good time to do that would be if you are already outside of your lock-in period or you're coming towards the end of that. Um, it's a good opportunity to review right now because you know, floating rates have increased. So if you took out a mortgage a few years ago on a floating rate, it's probably you know, around 6 or 7% now. But we can refinance at below 5% potentially. So it's worthwhile exploring that. We could also look to take out capital from the property when refinancing. So if the value of the property has increased and you want to leverage that equity, uh, we can apply for a larger loan amount than you're currently borrowing and use that extra equity to make further investments. If you're looking to change the ownership structure, maybe you're transferring to a company name or you're bringing on one of your children or whatever it might be, then so refinancing can assist with that. Uh, and when refinancing, it's often cheaper than taking out a mortgage for a purchase because uh, often the banks are offering uh, reduced fees or other incentives to try and win your business. Um, so yeah, if you do have an existing mortgage, it's worthwhile having a chat with us. It's not going to cost you anything just to understand your options and then you can make an informed decision after that. So I'm going to run through the application process now. So this is typical steps, what to expect when obtaining a mortgage. So the first thing we would look to do is a full assessment of your circumstances. So understand your financial position and your requirements, following which we can make a recommendation, which would normally come the same day as our chat. Then uh, if you wanted to proceed with one of those options, we would look to have you approved in principle, uh, which we can do within just a day or two. And that will give us some more reassurance that one of the lenders is happy to provide a mortgage to you. And then once you're ready to go ahead with the formal application, we would submit your application with all the necessary supporting documents, which I'll come on to on the next slide. The bank would need to do a survey on the property to have it valued. They value the capital value and the rental value because the, the rental value will feed into the rental stress tests. And the typical turnaround time to have the mortgage approved is about six to eight weeks, uh, during which time they've done a full underwrite of the application. They've conducted a survey and they've gone over all your documents 
And once that is approved, you have a binding mortgage offer, which is valid for between three to six months. So if you're buying a property off plan, which doesn't complete for another year or two, it would be too soon to apply for the mortgage because, of course, the mortgage would expire before completion. So we would normally look to apply about six months before the property completes. Um, however, if you wanted to get the loan pre-approved now, then we can do that. And once the mortgage is approved, there's still a further two or three weeks worth of legal work that the solicitor will need to complete before you actually draw down and complete on the purchase and take the keys to the property. So the typical documentation required when applying for the loan would be as follows. We would need proof of identity, so passport copy to Passport copies would also need proof of address, um, and they, those would normally need to be certified um, by a professional, so a solicitor, accountant, or advisor. Uh, income proof, so for employed personnel, we would need pay slips and sometimes um, an employment reference. If you are self-employed, then we would need tax returns for the last two to three years, and sometimes a reference from your accountant. For your deposit funds, we would normally need six months worth of bank statements to evidence the funds that you're putting towards this purchase. And if you have any existing properties, we would need documentation surrounding that. So mortgage statements, tenancy agreements. Um, a UK bank account is often required in advance of application submitting. So if you don't have a UK bank account already, it would be a good idea to get one set up because that can help speed up the process later on. If you don't, no need to worry. You know, we can assist you in setting one up. Um, and sometimes the lender we apply with will actually do that as part of the application process. But it's not always the case. And for the property itself, there are some documentation we would need. So contracts, EWS1 forms, energy performance certificates, uh, which we can look to get from the agent or developer directly. And that concludes my presentation. So I'll hand back to Angela, unless you want to uh, ask a question to me. Yeah, awesome presentation. It's clear that we have learned a lot about mortgage in the UK, and I'm sure that it will help. It will be helpful for the audience in understanding the topics better. Well, I do have some questions here, Sam. Uh, sure. You did mention about the uh, the proof of ID, the original which is certified. Does that mean we can do the certifications uh, by the local lawyers in Malaysia? Or do we have to go to the ambassadors in order to do, you know, the UK ambassadors there to do anything? Uh, no, you could do it through a, a local solicitor in Malaysia. That would be fine. In fact, some lenders that we work with will accept documents which are certified by myself or my team. All right. And we can do that uh, via you know, a web link even. It doesn't need to be in person. So it can be quite flexible and we'll give all the advice around that. But normally, yes, yeah, solicitor, accountant, professional can help to certify that. All right. OK, uh, back to the our topic today. Um, why should I consider borrowing from UK lender for my property purchase? Well, of course, if you're buying a property in the UK, then it would make sense to borrow from a UK lender because they understand the UK property best. Um, and of course, you know, there's far more lenders in the UK who are willing to lend against UK property than there would be, you know, lenders in Singapore or in Malaysia for UK property. So you have more choice of lenders. Um, UK banks would typically offer interest only mortgages where I believe you know, banks in this part of the world tend to not to, uh, and it's not going to impact your borrowing in Malaysia at all either. It's not going to show up on your local credit report if you've got a mortgage from a UK bank, whereas if you're taking a mortgage from a Malaysian bank, of course, it's going to show up on your credit report there. Um, I think I did mention that the UK banks, they can lend anywhere in the UK. So it gives you the ability to look to buy maybe in, in Manchester or Birmingham or yeah, somewhere outside of central London. And the UK lenders can also do owner occupier mortgages as well. So if you're buying for personal stay, that's not an issue. They can lend to company structures and I guess most importantly, at the moment, it does seem that you know the rates are very competitive from the UK banks. We can get some good fixed rates, and yeah, I would especially advise borrowing in pound sterling when you've got a pound sterling asset and when the income is in pound sterling to avoid any sort of 
exposure to the currency risk, then it would make sense to take out a mortgage in, in pounds. Um, so That's yeah, right. I think there's a fair few yeah. reasons to, uh, to, look, yeah. to borrow from a UK bank. All right. And then what about if the, um, um, if the mortgage is done by your side, would the uh, clients need to be in, in Singapore or they need to fly or you are probably doing in, in some kind of Zoom meetings or stuff like that? Uh, yeah, no need for them to come to Singapore. It can all be done uh, yeah, via Zoom or Teams. Uh, we do actually travel to Malaysia fairly regularly. Mm. Normally, at least once a month, either myself or one of my team will be out there. So we can also look to meet in person. Okay, that's great. But yeah, no need and for to travel it... to Singapore or the UK. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, is it possible, you did mention um, it, it can be arranged a pre-approved for a mortgage in UK, right? And uh, what is the uh, time frame uh, in between should be? Because you did mention that it will be best in six months to apply the, the mortgage. But if for the pre-approved, uh, would it be still considered in a year, like say, Andrew likes to buy properties in, in UK, I'm not sure what, what is the range of the products that I can look into. Can I do a pre access now and then uh, six months later, I, 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 I buy a property? Is that still considered? Mm -hmm. Is that still all right? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, you can do a pre approval whenever. You don't even need to have a property lined up just yet. The pre approval mm -hmm. could just be based on your anticipated budget. We can then work out how much it is you would like to borrow and we can get you pre-approved now just for some reassurance. So it doesn't need to wait until close to completion of the property. You don't even need a property just yet. All right. Okay. Um, my next question is, uh, is it possible to transfer my mortgage to another property if I move home? Uh, yes, it is possible. You can, uh, most mortgages in the UK are portable. Uh, is the mm. terminology they use. So that means that if you are, if you're selling the property or you just want to transfer to a different property, assuming it's a UK property, of course, uh, then you can port that mortgage to that new property, which avoids paying any penalties, you know, should there be any penalties in place. Right. What if I have a history of a bad credit? Can I still able to obtain a mortgage? Well, uh, it does make it a little bit more challenging, uh, okay. but not impossible. I yes. guess it depends you know, how bad the credit is mm -hmm. and, and how recent that credit is. Yeah. So, for example, you know, if you had multiple missed mortgage payments mm -hmm. in the last 12 months, then that's going to make it very difficult okay. because then, of course, the lender is going to be concerned that you're going to miss their mortgage payments as well. But if it's just a, a one off in the last 12 months or, you know, the bad credit dates back longer than that, maybe you know, two, two or three years ago, then um, that's fine. That can be dealt with and we can still get competitive products on that basis. So it really comes down to a case by case basis and uh, depending on, on how adverse that right. credit is, but it certainly can be done. Okay. And uh, what about the, uh, is that a, a typical length of a mortgage in UK? And it does, does it vary based on age? I mean, for assume that an age of uh, 26, I know, mm -hmm. And just started work, and yeah, of yeah, course I mean, the, uh, the salary base is quite good. And then, uh, I mean, what is the max would it be? The maximum term is typically thirty-five years, oh. uh, but it really does depend on the lender. Some lenders, the maximum is twenty-five, mm -hmm. and of course, it's going to be based on somebody's age as well. So, they look at the eldest applicant, and they normally, for a buy-to-let property, wouldn't lend beyond age eighty-five. But yeah, you know, that does mean if somebody is you know, age 50 or younger, then they can still get a 35 year mortgage. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's great. And uh, yes, lastly, um, can you provide any additional advice or guidance to on to obtaining a mortgage or would you any further advice on the audience mm -hmm. into, you know, uh, obtaining or, or, or getting a, a mortgage in a, in a, I mean, in a normal basic range that they, when they comes to see, uh, you know, a property consultant, and then they say, oh, I'm not sure what, what kind of, uh, whether I'm eligible in, in getting a loan and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I guess some of the best advice would be, uh, yeah, number one, obviously use the assistance of an experienced mortgage broker. 
such as ourselves, of course, and mm -hmm. therefore you know, we can help to get the loan pre-approved in advance. So uh, that will help to do away with any concerns because uh, once you've been pre-approved, then you know, there's a very good chance that you're going to be approved for the mortgage when it comes to the full application. Um, so it's always good to be prepared, um, you know, have the documentation ready for the application as well so once you've been pre-approved we'll share with you exactly what documentation the lender is going to need to apply for the loan so you can get that all in in place in one position you know sometimes you might need to have some documentation translated if it's not in English so it's good to get that translated in advance so that means then when you've got the property ready to move forwards then you can do so without any delay um, also as I mentioned in the presentation opening up a UK bank account ahead of time is probably going to help save some time as well because if you leave it um, for later on and we go to apply for the mortgage and you don't have the bank account in place, uh, then sometimes it's going to cause a delay and it can take a few weeks to actually get the bank account sorted. As I said, some banks we work with can help to set up the bank account, so it's not always a problem, but um, it's best just to make sure we've got access to all the lenders. So by having the UK bank account set up, that's going to help. Uh, and of course, you know, you, you mentioned adverse credit earlier. So just to ensure that for any existing commitments that you have in Malaysia or, or elsewhere, that you're keeping up to date on those payments, not falling behind. Because, of course, that may adversely impact your ability to borrow. Um, so, yeah, th those would be my nuggets of advice for you. Okay, thank you very much, Sam, for taking the time to share your expertise and knowledge with us. For those who are interested in learning more about investing in UK, be sure not to miss our upcoming international project program this month, 18 May, Thursday, 9.30 p.m. Malaysia time or GMT plus 8 on our Facebook Live on IQI International Sales page and YouTube. Please support us by giving us plenty of love and like. And don't forget to share the program with your friends and family. If you have any further inquiries, please do not hesitate and contact me or IQI International Sales Team. It was a pleasure having you all here today and we look forward to seeing you again in the future. This is Angela signing off and thank you very much, Sam, again. Goodbye. Pleasure. Bye-bye.